DeepSeek dropped a bomb today with R1 model, an open source reasoning model that has unpaired performance with AI01, but 96% cheaper compared with OpenAI's O1 model. And the team spilled out all the training secrets of how those frontier reasoning models are actually trained and what is driving the significant improvements. And this reasoning model also has a distilled version that you can run on your home device directly, as long as you have CPU with at least 48 gigabyte of RAM. So one thing became more and more clear is that those reasoning model is going to drive key advancement in large language model progress 2025. That's why today I want to dive a bit deeper into those reasoning models. How does it work? What's the best practice to prompt those reasoning model and how can you utilize those models today. So one of the key findings from OpenAI's O1 model is that the longer the model sinks, the better result it gets. And this is such breakthrough findings because we finally have a way to scale models capability further without just relying on pre-training data. You might notice the model capability improvement recently from GPT-4 to GPT-4.0 is not as dramatic as from GPT-3 to GPT-4. And that's because so far the key scaling method has been the pre-training. But for pre-training data, we are running out of data that we can use to train the model further. And this is also what Elia mentioned in the keynote the pre-training as we know it will end. And if we can figure out a way to through more computation during the inference stage and get a model to just think longer to increase its IQ, we'll no longer be limited by the amount of data we have to pre-train the model and get a model to start solving problems that it never saw before. So how do those reasoning models actually work? As we know, there's a technique called chain of thought, which basically just prompt the model to think step by step. And by doing that, the model's result just became much better. Fundamentally, all those reasoning models are just having the same behavior where it will generate a huge amount of chain of thought reasoning before it gives you the answer. But the difference is that the reasoning model's chain of thought is much longer and much higher quality and comes with a bunch of new behavior. Like it will try to stop and reevaluate their previous approach to reflect if it is the right approach or not. And also it will break down problems into smaller steps and also try multiple different strategies. And what's really fascinating is that all those special behavior where we mentioned and observe here is not programmed by the AI engineer or AI researcher. They just use reinforced learning to incentivize model to generate higher quality and longer reasoning token. And those behavior just emerged out of thin air. The model self-evolved, figure out better ways to do problem solving. As I mentioned in the paper, one of the most remarkable aspects of the self-evolution is emergence of sophisticated behavior, such as reflection, where the model will revert and re-evaluate the previous steps, and exploration of alternative approach to problem solving arise just spontaneously. Those behaviors are not explicit programmed, but instead emerged. Another really interesting thing mentioned in the DeepSeek R1 paper is the distillation. Basically, with those reasoning models, since it can generate originally a high quality reasoning data, then we can use those reasoning data to train smaller models for very specific domain tasks. So knowledge distillation has been a pretty popular method where you will use a very large big model to generate training data to train smaller models on very specific tasks so that you can actually get a really good performance for certain domain tasks, even on edge devices like a mobile phone. And they've successfully did it by using recent data generated by the DeepSeek R1 to train smaller models like Quinn. And this is also another reason why open source reasoning model like R1 is so exciting because previously OpenAI O1 model has been hiding all those reasoning tokens from the developers. And one of the key reasons I think they did that is otherwise they can take O1's reasoning tokens to either fine tune or do knowledge distillation to train their own reasoning models. So they has been preventing developers from getting those reasoning tokens. But now with DeepSeek, all those reasoning tokens is actually free and accessible for developers. So I think the knowledge distillation is actually going to be a pretty uh, big thing in 2025. I'm pretty keen to try and showcase an example workflow about how can we do that with those reasoning models. If you're interested, please leave a comment below. But even though those reasoning models are extremely powerful, not many developers are using those models in their large language model applications because it does come with a trade-off in terms of cost and latency. That's why today I want to take you through a few best practices I saw in terms of how to prompt those reasoning models effectively to get the best performance out, as well as some agentic use case where you can deploy the reasoning model today. I read through a few different papers that dive deep into this topic, as well as material from OpenAI and the research from Prompt Hub. I'm going to summarize the key learnings for you in 10 minutes. The first prompting principle for those reasoning models is that you try to make your prompt simple and direct. A lot of prompt techniques that we used to use for models like GPT-4.0 or Cross 3.5 actually it doesn't really matter here. In fact, in many cases, it contributes negatively for the result. This one really interesting paper called 
do advanced large language model eliminate the need for prompt engineer, where they try to use similar prompt techniques that we used to use for model like GPT 4.0 on reasoning model like O1 and compare the results. And the finding is really interesting. So you can see that those techniques like few short prompts, chain of thought critique normally drive up performance for GPT 4.0 model. But when it goes to reasoning model, the best performing result is when you use zero shot, which means you just give the instruction. Any other techniques you start adding actually drive the performance down. This is probably the first kind of counterintuitive thing. When you prompt those reasoning model, try to make your instruction really direct instead of super detailed and explicit. And one example provided by OpenAI is that the prompt that we normally use looks something like this. It will give the task itself, but often will give very specific instruction about let's think step by step, don't skip any of the steps, do this first and do that next, and in the end do this. And we might also put a prefix like this to guide the response generation. But this type of prompt is not great for reasoning model. Instead from what they found, for reasoning model, just keep it direct like this. Tell it what the task is and let it figure out the rest. So this is the first principle. The second principle is what I call one to two short prompting. This kind of relates to the first one. When we use few short prompt techniques with full model, we will normally try to give at least three to five different examples. But from different testing and findings, when you give that many examples, normally the result is not that great. This is one chart from a paper called MacQA, where they found that the O1 model, when you do future prompting with five different examples, the output will be actually lower than the minimum prompt. But from OpenAI's own guideline, they actually recommend you to use some kind of examples in the prompt, which they refer to as show the model how to do it instead of tell it what to do. And I think the key thing here here is the number of examples. When you give O1 model just one or two examples, it actually is doing great. But when you give more examples, the performance starts to degrade. And this is kind of aligned with OpenAI's own documentation. When providing additional context or documents, we should only include the most relevant information to prevent the model from overcomplicating its response. So this is second prompting techniques for those reasoning models that I found a bit counterintuitive. And third prompting techniques is that you can actually prompt those reasoning model for even more extended reasonings to get better performance. So as we mentioned before, one key findings for those reasoning model is that the longer those reasoning models sync, the better the performance. And this is one research where they test two different prompts. One type of prompt, it will tell the reasoning model to give very concise response where the prompt were including things like, I mean, emergency, speed is the most important thing, answer as quickly as you can. Versus the other one is that take your time and think carefully, spend as much time as needed to study the problem. And the result is, is that by prompting those reasoning models, it can lead to 16 to 30% more reasoning tokens, as well as increasing accuracy in the result. So this is also something you can try to squeeze more performance out of those reasoning model. So those are some special things you need to be aware of when using those reasoning model. And as you can see, all those gain IQ from reasoning model has this trade-off of time and cost. And this leads to a key question, which is when should you use those reasoning models? But before I dive into when to use those reasoning model, I know many of you are trying to learn how to make practical use of AI and start your own venture. And this requires lots of in-depth practice and learnings of how to build production level large language model application. And that's why I built this community called AI Builder Club where I share all the learnings and mistakes I personally have in terms of building large language model application and AI coding in production, alongside with practical examples take you through step by step, as well as tips and tricks from industry experts interview. And most importantly, we have this growing community of top AI builders who might already experience the problem that you are facing today so that people can just come to share the ideas and get advice from each other. I have put the link in the description below so you can go and join the community today. Now, without further ado, let's talk about when to use reasoning models. From my point of view, those reasoning models actually don't replace your day-to-day -day models, but now you actually have a new option to get more intelligence as a trade-off against higher latency and the cost. One mental model I normally think is that when you build large learning model apps, for most of the time, you should still use model like 4.0 and Cloud 3.5, but you can decompose your task into small steps and identify what are the steps that can benefit from additional reasoning and does the latency matter less. One of the example here is agent planning and reasoning, especially for those type of agent scenario where the process to complete the task can have more than five steps. You can actually use the reasoning model to generate a plan about how to execute tasks and then pass on the plan to smaller model they can actually execute tasks and do function calling like for mini. And I will take you through example quickly. 
But this is one of the most common use case I see where reasoning models can be used today. And second use case is the image reasoning and understanding. So those reasoning model has show better capability in terms of understanding complex image like flowchart or diagrams. And because of that, you can use those reasoning model for those complex image tasks, maybe for medical purpose. And a lot of people will also use those reasoning model to do image pre-processing to generate relevant metadata for each image so that it can be retrieved more accurately later. So this is the second use case I also saw that is pretty interesting. But the most straightforward example I want to showcase you today is agent planning. So imagine you're trying to build an agent for logistics stand to figure out the best route to fulfill customer's order. And this agent can have access to 20 or even 30 different tools. For this type of complex task, even with GPT-40 model, I can imagine that agent can struggle to complete task. But by utilizing strong reasoning model like DeepSeq R1 or OpenAI O1, you can get DeepSeq model to generate the plan first and then even use smaller, cheaper, and faster model like Full Mini to do the task execution. A here example again provided by the OpenAI team to showcase how can you integrate this planning step into your agentic system. Let's say we're building this logistic agent that can design the optimal route to fulfill the orders. And here we're going to define the context of the request. I'm not going to go into details, but it covers things like what's the inventory for each item, what's order information, what are available suppliers, uh, stuff like that. So we can use those as more context when the agent calls certain functions. And here is the problem for the planning step. So you are the supply chain management assistant. The first input you will receive will be complex tasks that need to be carefully reasoned through to solve. Your task is to review the challenge, create a detailed plan to process customer orders, manage inventory, and handle logistics. You will have access to a large language model agent that is responsible for executing the plan that you create and return the results. The large language model agent has access to the following functions. So here we will list out all the functions and tools that the full agent actually has access to. And when creating a plan for large language model to execute, break your instruction into the logical step-by-step -step order using a specific format. The main action taken should be numbered, and sub-actions are lettered like 1A, 1B, and specify conditions using clear if-then-else statements. And for actions that require using one of the above functions defined, write a step to call a function using backtick for the function name, ensure the proper input arguments are given to the model for instructions. And the last step in the instruction should always be calling the instruction complete function. This is necessary so we know the large language model has completed all the instructions you have given. And plan generated must be extremely detailed. And we should use markdown format for generating a plan with each step with sub-step. So this is a prompt that we're going to use for O1 model to generate plan. And later, after the plan is generated, we're going to pass on to the full O agent that can actually do the tool call to execute the task. And here we're saying you are a helpful assistant responsible for executing the policy on handling incoming orders. Your task is to follow the policy exactly as it is written and perform the necessary actions. You must explain your decision-making process across various steps. First, they read and understand the policy and then identify the exact step in the policy and decision-making briefly explain your action and why you are performing them and action execution. And here we're going to insert the policy that is generated by the O1 model. And then we're going to give the list of actual functions that full O agent can call, which is a lot. And below is where we define the actual tools. And here you can see we just use the context information to mock the results. Here we'll define some helpful functions. One is that we're going to print the message call one first, append the plan generated, and then call the full O model. And in the end, return the final message. Then this is just a helper function to adding the message into the message history that we define above and also print out the result in the terminal. And we'll also define this function that's going to call the O1 model, where we'll give the O1 model prompt that we we'll give as well as scenario and, and ask it to generate plan. Then we'll also define this two call agent that is pretty standard. It will be given this system prompt. If it is returned that it try to call the tool, it will try to run the tool until the function is instruction complete. Here you can see that OpenAI's notebook didn't really rely on tool calls, uh, finish reason to identify whether the task has been completed. But instead, they make it very explicit. In the O1 model prompt, the last step has to be calling this instruction complete function so that uh, we know large language model has completed all of the instruction you have given. So I guess this is probably part of the practice they found that it works better if you ask a model to explicitly calling out that all the instruction has been completed and followed. And then we're going to ask the agent to execute. So here you can see that first they all want to generate a plan with very clear step-by-step -step actions. First they need to fetch new orders and then it need to process each order. And for each order item, it should check the inventory availability, 
where it should call this function. And if the available inventory quantity is greater or equal to the order quantity, then process to allocate stock. So you can see here it gives very clear if, then, and else statement. So here the plan is actually very detailed, but following the clear structure so that full agent can execute the actions accordingly. And in the end, it will give this instruction, instruction complete. Then this plan will be sent to the full O model where it will start executing the actions based on this plan. And in the end, where it will call all those different functions and complete this action. So this example of how can you use O1 model to drive very complex decision-making actions. If you just give this task directly to full O media agent, it definitely won't be able to complete this actions. So those are some best practice and use case of how to fully utilize those thinking models in your large language model applications. Our continued posting interests in learnings and projects I'm doing in a community I'm building. It has loads of content about AI coding and how to build agents in large language model applications, as well as insights from industry experts. But most importantly, you have this community of top AI builders who might already experience problems that you are facing today. So you can just come here and ask any question you have where myself and other community members can just come and give advice. I have put the link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Thank you and I see you next time.